magic is not something to be feared, but a gift to pass on. This has never been personal. What the hell it ain't? You're trying to kill my son. This book belongs to our family, and together, we're going to use it to protect our family. One every person in the world. It's going to change everything. It's too damn risky. Look what we've been through to get here. We can't stop fighting now. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Film Optics Review brought to you by the Drive-In Podcast Network. I'm your host, Christian, and today we're going to be reviewing the latest HBO original series, Lovecraft Country. And as always, I'm joined by my good friend and my co-host, Devin. How you been, man? I've been good. Uh, we got a nice, nice win yesterday, and I think you might have won a bet. I did. I uh, waiting for my James Conner jersey to uh, just come in the mail. Want this? You know, it's 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 good stuff. You know, Steelers are on a Steelers are on a really good w- w- winning streak right now. You know, we're, we're five and zero. We face Tennessee this coming up week. That's going to be exciting. Got to wear our masks whenever when we're around them. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely going to try to. I'm going to be all Steelers out, you know? It's it's going to be good. I'm actually surprised that um, <laughs> that Tennessee won against the Texans. I did yeah, not see that coming game. whatsoever. Wait, what'd you say? That was a close game. <sighs> I was rooting for the Texans so hard. That's okay, though. But, hey, it's we're, it, we're, it's football season. We're, we're back in action. It's all good. You know, we're just... We're we're here having a good time, and uh, we're just waiting waiting to get that uh, that seventh ring for old Steel City. So that'll be a lot of fun. Football and Lovecraft they go hand in hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm happy that we're doing this, but I'm actually sad at the same time because it's like, what are my Sundays going to be filled with? Uh, maybe his dark materials. I don't know. I got to watch something new. I was uh, gonna watch start um, you know Haunting of Bly Manor, but unfortunate events you know happened throughout the weekend but and i mean it is what it is uh won't go too much into that but before we begin today just want to let everyone know um i would personally like to thank uh personally like to thank hbo for allowing me to watch and review this series um i was able to screen this for uh for this series so there were times where I'm like, man, like I really just want to watch like everything all at once. Cause I think I got the first five episodes um, before the series dropped on HBO and HBO max. And I was like, okay, do I watch them early? Or do I watch them with the rest of the world? It, depending on my schedule, it was, it was nice to have them because if I had something going on Sunday night, I could just watch them early, but I wanted to thank HBO for their, for uh, allowing me to uh, watch, uh, you know, watch those early. Unfortunately, we weren't both able to get screeners, and I know they're very weird when it comes to sharing that account. So, you know, we want to, we 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 don't want to step on anyone's toes, pretty much. So, I mean, it is what it is. But anyway, before we uh, start today's review, you can listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Red Circle, TuneIn iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. And, of course, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. Um, I'm using my backup mic today. You know, I'm home, back in the old OHIO for a few days. And, yeah, we're just going to... I'd say your your backup mic is most people's go-to number one mic. This is a really nice mic. Like, honestly, it's just I wish it was a dynamic mic because yeah you can use it for podcasting and you know you see a lot of youtubers use it and it's like if you're looking for something that's decent and you know that, that gets the job done the blue yeti is definitely um w- one of those mics out there that that they can really uh you know surprise you so hey blue sponsor just, the pod send, send us yeah. some free stuff blue <laughs> yeah man give, give us some uh i'm just saying uh, oh that that um that honey thing that you sent me the link is dead i was like no i was so mad the yoda one to... huh the the baby yoda thing 
No, not the Baby Yoda. The um, the the, the Honey Sponsor uh, podcast oh, yeah. link thing that you sent me. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. but eh, it's it it is what it is. But Devin, let's just we're we're going to be talking about this for a bit. I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but. This is definitely spoiler city, everyone. We're going to be talking about everything. We're not holding back with this because the, the finale was amazing. And honestly, this is clearly one of the best TV shows of 2020 um, that is out today. And if you haven't seen Lovecraft Country, it is based off of a novel of the same name. Um, so, of course, you know, the books are going and, to and it is not more. not based on like Lovecraft's actual work. Like there was some confusion. People were thinking it's like an adaptation of H.P. Lovecraft's work, but it's it's a book called Lovecraft Country, not yeah. directly from his works. Matt Ruff. Yeah. Well, it hits yeah. his work, but not from Lovecraft's directly. Right. I saw right. a lot of Correct. negative reviews that were like, this isn't H.P. Lovecraft. No, it's, it's, like it's not Matt Lovecraft. Ruff. <laughs> it's like, well, that's where you're wrong, because it's not H.P. Lovecraft at all. But, yeah. Man, I'm just I'm blown away, man. Let, let's just dive right in really quick. Um, of course, we have the show's creator, Misha Green, and it stars Jonathan Majors, Journey Smollier, uh, Courtney B. Uh, Vank. I think I, I might have actually cut off her name there. Um, from Vance, <laughs> from <laughs> from everything else. Um, we have oh my gosh, I don't have my glasses on. You want to? Oh, we got Jamie Chung, of course. We got uh, Jada Harris uh, playing Di- uh, Diana Freeman, and we got Michael Keith Williams as well. So it's it, it's it's a pretty stacked cast, man. And sorry, I'm trying to like you know get excited for this. This has been a long past few days with the drive and whatnot. So I apologize if I sign a little sound a little tired because I probably am. But Devin, you you just finished the uh, the the uh, season finale, right? Yeah, within the hour. Ooh, literally within the hour, like minutes before, <laughs> I was like, "All right, I'm like, we we recording this?" And unfortunately, uh, Leo from Geekly Goods was supposed to join us today, but he was not feeling well. But wanted to give him a quick shout out. Definitely check out his content. He makes a lot of great stuff over on his YouTube channel. That is at Geekly Goods over on YouTube. Uh, he's been super excited about this. So unfortunately, you know, he's not feeling too well right now. So. He was not able to join us, but you know, there will always be um, other, other TV shows we'll be raving about, I'm sure. But Devin, I, I like really quick before we get into the rest of, you know, the overall season, what, what are your thoughts about the finale? Like, or I want, I've watched it twice so far, actually. The, the finale. Let's see. I wasn't like blown away. I, I've, it sounds like you were like, you thought it was amazing. Yeah, I, I really, I mean, I really did. I mean, th- th- there was a few things I was a bit confused over that I feel like I actually need to rewatch the entire series because, you know, th- there is a lot going on. Um, but, like, even with, um, oh, my gosh, um, um, Ticks or Atticus, I'll just call him Tick, with his, uh, is it uh, Gia, his um, South Korean, you know, long lost lover or whatever you want to call her yeah you the, know since she's the, the Kimiko, fox lady yeah 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 the nine tail fox lady she's like kimiko so she has she still has that beast inside of her because last time we saw her you know during the i believe it was episode was it six or i think it was seven it was or, episode six. Drum roll, please. hey there we go um yeah yeah episode six where you know she had to consume what was it not a hundred uh, was 100? it a yeah, hundred men's souls and she stopped at 99 so she clearly you know we see that towards the end of the um towards the end of the finale where she still has the uh, nine tail fox the kimiko inside of her so i thought that was pretty interesting I'm like okay i guess she stopped because when she um meets tick at the hotel and that one guy comes up to her to him uh to her right before and you know he's like oh you know you seem like you're um you know um you know not from here very foreign mystery of the orient type deal 
and then you know she speaks in south korean and then she's he's like oh it was like do you not speak english she, she's like i was she's like i just asked you would you be willing to die if you fucked me or something like that i was like yep. ouch <laughs> he was like, <laughs> he was uh... like okay, never mind moving on but yeah, uh, so th- there there are a few things that I still are in question, but I wanted to get your overall thoughts about at least the final episode before we kind of dive into everything else. It kind of feels like uh, episode nine could have been a finale as well, in a way, because that, that also left off on like a really, really no- uh, good note as far as the ending of that episode, because that was like really well done. So I don't know, like... If they could have somehow switched those two, I don't know how that's even possible. Because yeah, yeah. Spoiler I, alert: I, I, Atticus I dies. Yeah, I I think episode nine, uh, you know, when, when they're going back in time uh, during the Tulsa massacre, an, another Tulsa massacre uh, storyline, um, also with uh, Watch HBO's Watchmen. You know, they're just killing it. But I do agree; it did feel it. You know what? You know what it felt like to me if it. So usually during Game of Thrones, I know you haven't watched it. It um, usually the the climax of each season is episode nine, and then the aftermath of everything that's happened is usually episode ten. You know, wrapping up everything, and that's what it felt like to me. Because episode nine, like you say, you know, it was such a huge high, and it was definitely yeah, one of the I felt, I felt like it had more closure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, for everything that was happening with uh, Diana, you know, with her curse and whatnot, which was crazy. That was by so the way. creepy. Oh my gosh. The, the little, usually kids in like in scary movies and stuff are not scary at all to me, but this one, just the way they were moving, they were, it was so creepy. Dude, like I, those are some scary kids. When they were like skipping backwards to like the. Uh, yeah. The train thing, and then they're like whispering to each other. D's, D's like, what the hell? And then like one of them like completely bends backwards. I was like, nope. <laughs> yep, that's when it gets creepy. Like you're not supposed was, to move I like that. I literally had to pause the TV. I was like, okay, what's happening right now? <laughs> but it was a really good episode. Like crazy, crazy good. Um, you know everything with her curse turning into well the the. Um, the, the name of that episode was uh, Jagabobo, so it's kind of like. I mean, I was watching. Uh, do, do you watch heavy heavy spoilers? The YouTube channel from time to time. I have a couple episodes? times. Yeah, so I was actually just watching his um, explanation on that, and he was explaining, you know, obviously, you know, where the word Jagabu comes from, and but the episode was named Jagabobo, and they kind of like combined like a derogatory term with a um like a servant term in a way so that was kind of it was it was interesting it, i was i liked how he explained it to everyone instead of just ignoring it because some people just may not know but it yeah it was whew, nope <laughs> <laughs> they did such a great job though you know what i mean yeah the makeup it was, it was the insane I, choreography absolutely. what's up the makeup they had on and the choreography they did it was so good <laughs> man and then she it's crazy because you know she's the only one who can see them and it's like okay where did they come from are they just man manifestations of just a random curse when she ran into yeah the police uh, officer yeah the police officer when you know when they were at the uh not the equinox but the uh the um multiverse machine that it was it was just really good like i loved how they kind of just like it is like a dark fantasy you know there's horror vibes you know monkey Paw productions did help produce this you know uh we so we know the work from uh jordan peele himself and i believe uh jj abrams had a uh role in either producing or writing a few episodes as well or directing i can't remember but i just i thought it was just great overall you know like i i'm all for like you know the magic and the sci-fi like there was definitely sci-fi elements but it felt different at the same time you know what i mean yeah i was trying to figure out like lock down a couple of genres and I, there's just so many like it's not the first couple are mostly horror the first couple episodes and then yeah. but then it turns it's into more like one 
Yeah, it turns into more like an action adventure towards the middle. Then, then it gets really sci-fi. Then it gets really, really sci-fi, <laughs> like crazy sci-fi. I <laughs> and the last few episodes are kind of just a mix of everything. Yeah, it really is hard to fog. It's it's kind of like explaining the genre of what Parasite is to people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's because I've every single time someone asks me, you know, they're like, "Hey, you know what? Um, what would you call this? Like, is, I'm like, is this, it's a thriller? It's a comedy? It's it's just so many things, like, well crafted, like put together when it comes to like telling that story and. I mean, even the ending of Lovecraft, it's, you know, during the beginning, like the first episode, it's called Sundown. Like that was probably one of the most like intense, like TV, like TV episodes I've probably ever seen in my yeah, entire life. Yeah, it was such a good way to, to get people like hooked. It was such a good first episode. Yeah, and it, it really did. And then I know some people from like season, I mean, not season two, excuse me, episode two. Episode two, is, it was more of like, an explanation of yeah, it was more set up world yeah and it was like i mean i know a lot of people would say it's probably one of the weaker or probably the weakest episode of the entire series but i feel like it was needed because you know they're doing all this world building they have to explain you know what this world is and why there why there is magic within you know our ordinary world and it just makes things more exciting but you know then from there on out it's just it's just crazy from episode to episode the the, uh the hippolyta episode i think that was seven that was a bit weird that's that's where it lost me i remember texting you i was like that's that's a little too weird for me like they just (laughs) but but then after you finish the season, it's like you look back on it. You're like, okay, I understand why they had to do that now. Like, it makes yeah. sense why they they had to have that to, to set up her being These, a, a badass yeah. blue haired time traveler, a <laughs> dimension <Yeah>. <laughs> she's, she's She's like the she's like the black Doctor Who or something. I don't know. It's weird. But it it does, I mean, it does set up and it does pay off in the end because you see with, you know, after Dee's curse, um, you know, her arm is essentially inoperable in a way. And, you know, she gets full metal alchemist style, man, just gets a metal arm. And I don't know if you know what full metal alchemist is, the anime, but, you know, I just thought of Terminator. Oh, okay. Well, uh, for me, it was either full metal alchemist or. Uh, Bucky. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a few metal armed characters out there. Oh, for sure, absolutely. <laughs> Barrett from Final Fantasy VII. Well, he is more of a gun for an arm, if anything else. But yeah, it, it, I thought it was really cool. You know, she, you know, D was one of the creative characters in the show, and the cast just worked so well together. You had, you know, the relationship between. You saw how close Uncle George and you know, his daughter D were and, you know, that and Hippolyta, that family. And then, you know, Atticus, you know, it's, it's cousin Atticus and his, um, his father who was, you know, who, who was gay and wasn't able to really show or express who he was as a person, you know, especially, um, with, uh, Atticus's father, um their uncle george and um atticus's mother like surviving the tulsa massacres like that's pretty big and it's like yeah you know, it's, some, it's dark yeah like it was just insane man like i just couldn't man th- this entire show like it was just it was really really engaging and um uh, I mean i guess i can call it inspiring in a way but it's definitely one of those shows where like I would I would buy the Blu-ray of this, like absolutely. Like I like I enjoyed Watchmen so much I bought it, and you know there there are a lot of like racial controversy like topics in this you know in this show, and you know of course back then, um, my God, what what year did this story start? I can't remember. It's obviously it was after Tulsa. It was 1950s. That's right, 1950s. So yeah, like racism was was in its I guess you could say prime form in a way. And 
I don't know, man. I I, mean, I I keep rambling on, but you know, like, um, what I guess you know, what did you like about this series? Like, what didn't you like? Like, what grabbed you? Or you know, like, if you wanted to talk about any of the characters, I like I said, sorry, I'm like babbling over here. <laughs> I think the thing I liked the most was like the setup and layout they had for the season. Like they had it all planned out so well. Like the first like two episodes are more of the the whole group as a whole, um, getting to know them and and who they are. But then. Every episode after that is kind of like a deep dive into each character and their backstory and gives them a little more um, relatableness as you, as you move through the season. Like episode three is more focused on Letty. Then four is, I guess, more focused oh, on... Letty's um, episode was so good, dude. Yeah, that, oh that was creepy. That was good. It was creepy, but like, wow. Holy crap. That ending. <laughs> yeah. And... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> go go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to yeah. cut you off. Then I guess episode four is kind of focused on Montrose. And then five is all about Ruby. I loved that one so much. That was so good. And then six is um is Tick getting his backstory. That was a really cool one. And seven, yeah. we're we're looking at Hippolyta. Eight, um, Diana gets her episode. I don't know if it was just me, but I I really didn't notice Diana until that episode. I don't See, know. Yeah, I felt like, like they didn't yeah. really set her up that much until then. Then she was just like there as yeah. a main character. Yeah, she was in, in, and I was kind of, um, kind of confused at first because you know, yeah, we've seen her there. Like, oh, you know, it's it's Diana. Like, it's she's the daughter of Uncle George and Hippolyta. But yeah, she didn't really get a lot of limelight until, um, yeah, until episode eight when when she was cursed. But I feel like. Even from episode eight on, she quickly became a lot of people's favorites because definitely you know, some Sherry vibes. Some what? Oh, Sherry, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is true. So, so you said episode three with Ruby and her transformation is probably your favorite. Uh, it's episode um, no I'm five. Sorry. Uh, episode five. Episode three was with um. Oh my gosh, Journey Smollett's um. Yeah, character. I think I think my favorite might be right. episode six, which was Meet Me in Daegu, which was the the craziness of of Gia and Atticus that was, meeting. That was really, I think that it was, was definitely the most memorable job. to me. I think. Yeah, because it was I mean, just such a different setting, and it was so different than the rest of the season. No, I I, I definitely agree. And sorry, like I really need to work on not cutting people off. Um, yeah, I would say when I was watching episodes one through five, I really liked episode three when Letty, like you know, she bought the house and the house was cursed or haunted. That one was like really really good. Obviously, episode one was amazing. Um, I think Ruby's episode was probably one of my favorites as well. But I would have to agree that with um the the south korean episode was just because you you have this backstory of you know atticus's like first love essentially and you know when when she uh, when she shows up later on in series like all the way from south korea and we already find out that you know letty's pregnant with attic uh you know with atticus's um baby and you know, you're kind of wondering, you know, like, why did she come all this way? But it's like, oh, you know, like, I remember her from her own episode. And it really gives you a different look at Atticus because you see that he's kind of like the, like the, uh, the, the Jon Snow, essentially, of this show, you know, always trying to do the right thing and, you know, having this amazing like moral compass and whatnot. But you, 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 get, you get to see a different side of him. Yeah, she has a bit of a darker side. He's yeah, not perfect. You know, yeah, when he was serving the uh in, in the Vietnam War and just how you know, like did he want to do the things that he did? No, but it was orders and it's kind of like, you know, you disobey orders, you never know what could happen, especially, you know, uh with uh, to a black man serving back then. And that, you know, that kind of echoes when we had reviewed uh, the five bloods where you know they're like, yo, you like all these like black men are going overseas to fight for a country that at the time didn't really care about them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was crazy, man. Like uh, this, this whole show is just fantastic. But uh, yeah, 
Uh, the South Korean episode was really, really good. My God, it was just I, I also did love um, the Ruby episode. It definitely reminded me of Twilight Zone. And it was also like yeah. so gory and like gross out. It was amazing. Like, the, yeah, the skin like falling off the body. Is, it, lo- it looks so <laughs> it real. Like, it's it's kind of like you're eating some nice ribs or whatever. And then it's like just fall, fall off the bone good, yeah. you know? Yep. <laughs> get that nice little magic in there but um even what you know when you find out we, when we find out for uh, christina i wanted to talk about her for a little bit and how you know she's also william but we find out that william is christina's lost love he had died yeah, that, so. that part definitely confused me i was like okay I so like, Yo, so like, she so is means- him but him is so, i don't know yeah, so she, but then she, she is much. also Ruby at Wait, the what? end. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ruby's yeah, Ruby's dead. I mean, supposedly, but they, but they didn't show it. Yeah, they didn't show it. Yeah, she supposedly died off screen. That was creepy, by the way. It was like, oh, like she was like, well, what makes you think you're seeing one star spell early? And she's like, oh, lady's like, you know, she won't do it. She needs her the moon at the highest peak. And then they it's witching about, hour. Yeah, I was like, yo, but I'm trying. So it looks like Ruby might have cast this, another protection spell on Letty because when, you know, that whole fight scene was going on, you know, Letty gets like freaking kicked yeeted. <laughs> she gets, <laughs> she gets, she gets Brandon Stark to out of the window. <laughs> and the difference is, you know, Brandon can't walk anymore, <laughs> but uh, we're Bran, Bran Stark. Excuse me, and um, yeah, you 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 seriously think like Letty's like dead for a second because like she's just there, and then out of nowhere it looks like she has a different protection spell on her. So it looks like her sister kind of made that last sacrifice before she quote unquote died. I'm but, yeah, that's kind of the one of the issues with the finale it's just like how does that work because well, why did it take so long for the spell to kick in i guess because when when she was sitting in the fire standing in the fire she was just immune to all of it yeah but then this one it kind of takes a while i guess and we don't really know how it happened we yeah, don't know what happened to true. ruby yeah it's like when did that spell manifest into letty was it prior to the fight was it yeah, I mean, I really, I really don't know. I guess my my guess, would, shoot, man, I don't know. That's a good question. But I also, I also want to ask, like, I don't, I don't know if, like, season two. I kind of want it just to be one season. It yeah, kind of feels like one of those one of those series where it's just one really good season. But it, like, I think totally they're gonna have a season that. two, right? See, we haven't got any uh we haven't gotten any confirmation on, you know, second season. You know, we've been here about for the boys. He's I don't I don't even know where they go from here without Atticus. Do you think Atticus is Unless really they dead? just revive him? Yeah. They could just oh, well, revive him, I guess. Maybe, but it's like because obviously even with like I I don't know, like Harry Potter, like throughout the entire story, you know, it's as messed up as it is, you know, I mean uh Dumbledore knows everything that happens with Harry and essentially you know trying to give Harry like the best years of his life before you know she because you know they know what Harry is he's a horcrux and in order for Voldemort to essentially die you know Harry has to die because part of Voldemort's soul is within is within him so it's kind of like Oh, you know, like minus like the resurrection stone, there wasn't. I don't think there was any indication of Atticus coming back because, I mean, we saw the blood. It was a lot of blood. That was so much blood, blood. and it happened so fast. It really did, and it was just like, I mean, Christina's gone, (laughs) and the way that, you know, it wasn't. Like the entire time they thought, oh, you know, Atticus is dying for the, um, I guess, for the benefit of Christina. But, you know, that was her plans. But, you know, they kind of find like a counteractive spell to erase magic from 
all white people and you know saying that magic is ours now because it was used obviously mm-hmm. as we saw throughout the series i guess more to mm, appr- i guess you could say oppress or to you know keep you know black people in line or whatnot because you know we see some cops that know magic as we see with d and then others may not know about it so it was kind of weird like okay how many people in the world are aware that magic is real or like magic is a thing within their universe but i don't know but yeah there's definitely a lot of questions there for sure because you know obviously we don't see letty give birth to their son george and yeah i I would have to agree i would kind of wish it would just be one season but i would say no more than like two seasons max you know what i mean yeah, cause I just really don't know where they go from here. Yeah, yeah, it's not like with like Maniac on Netflix or uh, Unbreak on Unbreakable on Un- Unfixable, Unbelievable. There we go. Sorry, wow, I'm going through all these different mediums. To <laughs> um, yeah, so with um, Caitlin Dever, you know, in that in that story, it was, it was a one and done. But then again, with uh, I'm not sure if you watched um, Watchmen, the HBO series. Like, it definitely leaves an open ants, like an open ended, you know, thing. As I mean, I won't, you know, spoil anything, but th- th- there's a pretty big like cliffhanger as like like will they make a season two? Or will they not? I feel like this is the same way, but I believe it's the, only the one book. But I don't know how long the book is or where they ended, you know, the story between the show and you know like okay we're only gonna go up to like halfway mark through the book and then kind of leave it open-ended for there if we want to do a season two but i don't know it's it's a mystery man it's a mystery yeah Yeah. i don't know it's it's some crazy crazy stuff so i guess who was your favorite character i know we've kind of talked about you know, our likes and dislikes of each episode or like our favorite episodes, but like who, who was your favorite character throughout this, uh, this journey? I mean, it's Atticus. It's, it's gotta be Atticus. Jonathan Majors is so good. Green Lantern. Maybe. I'm just saying, I'm just saying he can do it. He can do it. I mean, John, John J. David Washington's cool, but I'm just saying Jonathan Majors. He's got, he's got it, man. <laughs> Why not both? That is true. I mean, there, there are multiple Green Lanterns, so I don't see why they couldn't play both. Um, man, I guess for me, I mean, besides, I mean, I feel like Tick is a pretty like obvious answer for a lot of people. For me, it would probably either be Letty or I really. I mean, I like, I love Ruby, even like, even as like crazy as Christina was, she was just very, like, you could kind of see her as the villain, but like, not at the same time, you know what I mean? She was kind of one of those moral gray, like, it was more of just like an obstacle, because like, even with like Thanos, like a lot of, you know, the heroes didn't really know who he was, or like, you know, it wasn't... It wasn't that, oh, you know, like, it's not that Thanos knew about the Avengers prior to, like, the attack on New York when, you know, he was trying to get um, the Infinity Stones. He was just kind of like an obstacle, you know what I mean? And obviously ended up being more and more of a villain. But I don't know, Christina, I felt like it was, I feel like it was more like a 50-50 type thing. You know what I mean? Um, in a way, at the end, you know, though, yeah. she just I mean, like a hundred percent. It's like V, yeah. But you know, she she had her moments. I like, guess you can be like, okay, like is she really like you know the actual? Well, I, I guess you could say you know, the the main antagonist was, I mean, dead from the beginning, which was uh, Braithwaite. You know, with everything that happened with uh Atticus's uh ancestors and whatnot, but I think I would say either Letty or um my gosh, what is her name again? I'm blanking on her name, the South Korean lady. She was so good. Gia. Gia. 
I think she was definitely one of my favorites for for the short time that she was in. It had to be between those two. Yeah, sure. Let, Letty uh, Journey definitely killed it too. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, she she was viewed as you know the I guess you could say the 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 mess up or like the black sheep of her family. You know, her and Ruby um, had their own issues and you know, with her mother passing and whatnot. And it was, you know, they, they, they spoke a lot about family in uh, episode 10. And, you know, for Letty, she was saying, oh, you know, like we knew each other, but like the word family was just thrown around just for the sake of calling us something, but they weren't really like a true family. But yeah, man. I mean, I, I really liked um, Uncle George's character as well. I thought he did a great job for the, what, two episodes that he was in? Yeah, only like, two episodes. <laughs> so sad. It's, dude, episode one, when uh, one of the cops gets infected, and he was like, uh, you need to shoot him. <laughs> yeah. Like, yes. But yeah, I mean, great, great performances all around, man. The, the cast had such amazing chemistry, and I mean, I, it, part of me, like I said, it really wants a season two, but only if there's something to tell or it's like, hey, you know, th- there is more to the story. You know, let's tell it in this fashion. But, like, if you're going to do it, just don't rush it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't want you to ruin a good thing. Maybe a few years down the road, but I don't know. We haven't really gotten any uh, okays from that type of thing. But maybe this is something that Netflix should look into. Like, you know, since they mainly started um, canceling out majority of like their TV shows after like the third and fourth season, which actually kind of scares me for the Dragon Prince because it's very, very good. Um, you know, they normally end up canceling after that. It's like, well, maybe a lot of these shows from the beginning should set up to be, hey, you know, we're gonna have three, th- three seasons, beginning, middle, and end. We're only have four seasons be done with it or just do more limited series because that's what it seems like people are going to be doing i mean stranger things they kind of hinted that i think they probably go up to like five seasons for that but it's like okay but you gotta you know give us a reason to stick around but i don't know yeah it feels like it feels like most shows don't have much plan beyond the first couple seasons yeah i mean like i kind of understand though because it's like you, you don't know how well that show is going to do, especially on that net, whatever network or platform that it's on. So it's, it's very hard to kind of gauge that. Cause I mean, a lot of usually with a lot of like bigger shows, you know, it's, they're still trying to find their footing as to what they want the show to be and what type of, you know, genre or vibes they, they want to give off. And so it's very, um, it's very weird sometimes, but I mean, I, I I totally get it. It's 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 an unknown thing. Even if you notice with um, what was it with uh, with Parks and Rec? Like, I mean, a lot of those like season finales could have probably just been the end of like the entire series. And I kind of read into it and watched a few videos, and they were like, yeah, like the reason why they kind of went all out like every single at like season finale was because they weren't sure if they were going to get renewed for a new season. But you know. Obviously, you know, with the success that it did, you know, they had more of a definitive ending. But yeah, it's it's hard with TV shows sometimes. It's 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 always been the uh, the Achilles heel. You know, the show can start off fantastic and amazing, and you know, the ending is kind of like meh. Like I've heard a lot of, a lot about that with like Haunting of Hill House and Haunting of Bly Manor. That you know, throughout the entire journey, it's great, but you know, like the endings could have been better but they weren't bad but it was just more of you know it it could have been different type of situation but um yeah uh was there anything else you wanted to touch on before we uh give scores i guess i think i think we're good all right man so out of a hundred what would you give lovecraft country season one i'm gonna give it and 81. Ooh, yep. I was going to go 85. Just because. Actually, no, scratch that. I'm going to give it in a 90. That's what I want. I'll give yeah. it a 90. It, it, was a, it was a pretty good, freaking amazing show. You know, have issues here or there, and that's with every single 
TV show that you watch. Um, but yeah, 81 from you, 90 from me. Um, you know, it's just a few small little things that it, it was mainly just the ending. You know, we didn't really get a definitive like, hey, you know, there is going to be a season two or like, hey, like if this is the ending, then everything needs to wrap up within this, you know, final episode, which most things did. But obviously, you know, there's there there's still a little a few more open um, open doors that, you know, we don't really know where they lead to. So. Yeah. For me, I'd say four, episode four, seven, and then the finale where the weak points. Four, four was seven. like four was like the um, when they go out to like it's like an Indiana Jones adventure. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that one girl that they kind of just like or creature that that yeah, he uh, just he just off her. Yeah, like with no explanation whatsoever, because I still feel like he's hiding something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he's he's hit a lot this season, but I feel like he's still hiding something that he's not yeah. telling everybody. But, yeah. All right. Well, that pretty much concludes our uh, spoiler-free review of Lovecraft Country Season 1. Of course, Devin, thank you always for coming on and talking shop about all these amazing movies and TV shows and video games we love and love to talk about each and every single week. Of course, you can listen to this podcast again on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Red Circle, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Film Optics. That is Optics with an X. And of course, you can go ahead and check out the Music City Drive In dot com of uh, the website excuse me the music city driving website where we're part of we are, we are a part of a network um of theirs the mu- music city uh the, the drive-in podcast network excuse me you know we got music there's commentaries there's oscar talk all over the place or sports you know it's you know sports are pretty much in full swing i mean full swing i use that very lightly but oh, sorry about that um <laughs> And this mic literally picks up on everything. It's insane. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, we're uh we're just, we're six weeks into uh, you know, it's NFL and of course, you know, they do a lot of um do a lot of the uh, the old college football talk as well. So yeah, we got um, you know, definitely check that stuff out. That all that will be in the podcast description below. And um also really quick for um <clears throat> sorry about that. I um for the the YouTube part portion of our uh, podcast, um, clearly I haven't really been uploading. I haven't uploaded things on there for a while, uh, mainly just because you know Devin and I um, we don't really have. Well, I mean we we have cameras. We just normally just don't like to use them. We want you to hear our beautiful voices instead of looking at our I don't know our mugs all day, whatever. But um, yeah, YouTube's more of a you know a video platform, and you know, I kind of put a lot of thought into it. And it's like, you know, it's it, it's a video platform, you know, for podcasts and audio with a still image. I feel like it could work for a while, but I feel like it, it can only go so far. So, you know, once we get sponsored and you know get everything, you know, up and running and get our names out there a little bit more. Uh, would we'll definitely make a return back to YouTube, but I kind of wanted to address that for a bit. But um, what are we reviewing coming up, Devin? Are we are we still doing Blind Manor? Did, did you want to cap cap off Halloween with that? I mean, I could. I, I feel like I could totally swing that for like a week, or I don't know. Hellstrom, just saying, all episodes are out now, baby. It's good stuff. Mm, I mean, the answer is Borat. Ooh, when does Borat come out? I f- totally forgot about that. It That's comes out Monday, right? October 23rd, so okay. this Friday. This is coming out Friday? So, yeah, yeah, let, yeah let's do Borat. Um, Borat yeah, subsequent we'll- movie film. I love the title. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm assuming we're, we're not doing bad hair. <laughs> Did you even attempt? No. It's okay. You're not missing anything. It, it, that, that movie was weird. I'm not going to lie. But, of course, if, um, if you are interested, anyone out there listening, um, watching Hellstrom, uh, I do have my um, episode one through five review up on the uh, Music City Drive-In um, website. So I'll also link that in the description below. It's it's very good. I'm, I've def- I didn't know all 
10 episodes were going to come out on day one. Um, so it looks like, you know, Hulu's all about the binge. And yeah, we also have Run coming up as well. Um, that will be within the next few weeks uh, when we're allowed to closer towards the embargo um, period that we're allowed to release that uh, review and uh, whatever else comes to mind. You know, we're kind of playing it by ear here for a little bit, you know, back home in Ohio for a few days, but I'll be back in Music City, baby. It's coming up Friday, so that'll be a lot of fun. And of course, um, you know, we have our music or sorry, our new show every single week. So keep a look for that coming out this uh, coming up Friday. That was Devin. My name is Christian, and we will see you guys in the next one. Peace.